Hey again guys and welcome back. In this video I want to build a really cool circuit with you guys and that circuit is called the Jewel Thief. Now if you're a big watcher of Julian Eilert's channel or Big Clive's channel uh, you'll see that they have actually made multiple videos on the Jewel Thief but it's a really cool circuit and I think it's something uh, worthwhile for us tinkerers to make at home. Um, the principle of a Jewel Thief is it takes a low voltage, like 1.5 volts from a battery, a AA cell or AAA cell or even a coin cell, and it raises that voltage up to a level that you can actually light a white LED. And in fact, you can do more with it, which we'll see in the future. So I want to show you how to build this. The diagram is quite simple. The battery, as long as it's above... Um, let's say 0 0.8 volts to start off with, uh, it will be able to start the circuit and make it work. And so really your batteries that are dead you're about to throw out, you can actually use in this uh, circuit. Now the first thing up in the circuit is actually the crux of the circuit which is a sender tapped transformer. And this seems like an expensive component, but you can actually make it for very cheap at home, and we'll be making our own today as well. So next, you have a resistor. Um, I use 1K, but I have tried 100 ohm, and it also works. So really, I, I think this circuit's pretty robust. You can do kind of whatever. Then the base of a standard NPN transistor, like this. This can go along to the negative over here. And then this line here will connect right here on the collector of the transistor. And then our LED like that. And that is it. That's the entire circuit. And how the circuit works um, without being too specific because I don't quite understand the specifics, is that current will flow through this transformer down this way to the base of this transistor, which will turn on this transistor. I think uh, in our case it's 3904, 2 and 3904, but I think uh, pretty much any NPN transistor will work. So, you know, whatever you want. But uh, current flows down here and triggers the transistor to turn on which will flow a large current down this way that current will create a uh, reverse current in the other side of the um, windings here which will collapse which will close this current from flowing which will collapse the magnetic field and cause an inverse a current in the opposite direction to flow with a higher voltage because of the speed of the collapse of this magnetic field. And so that'll actually light our LED and we can actually probably climb it to pretty good voltages, but enough definitely to light the LED. Now you won't get all the current as if you had this LED on a, you know, a regular five volt source and we're dropping current through a dropper resistor because obviously this will be a oscillation which will be pulsed but you'll still have enough to light that LED and you'll see it's going to be pretty bright. The first thing we have to do though is to make this component here uh, which is if you had to buy it separately would probably be the most expensive thing but if you've taken apart CFLs or printers or whatever you probably have some of these things laying around. These are ferrite beads and pretty much anything with um, a reasonable in it, like magnetic core will work for this project. I'm also using, this is a 28 gauge magnet wire. And I'll be using, I don't know, just two feet maybe of this stuff. I don't think you need very much. Um, I will just be using two feet and if we have extra, we have extra. And then you just add the transistor and the resistor to that and you have a cool circuit for not very expensive. So the first things first is we're going to join 
the two ends of this wire together. I don't know if you can see that very well. And I will point, make the end a little bit pointy like that. And then I'll run this through this ferrite. Now if you have a large ferrite, you can actually use kind of a big wire. But don't forget, the bigger the wire, the fewer turns that you'll have on your transformer. And therefore, I think that's the lower the voltage you'll be able to achieve. All right, so now I've just crimped that over like that. And now I'm going to just wind it around and always in the same direction, pull down these wires and wind it around. I'm just going with the pointy end through. Once you get a winding or two around, you don't need to hold the wires in anymore. I do have a little length there. See? A little length sticking out. All right. And I'm just going to wind this up until this is fully wound. Sort of like that. And you can kind of shove the, the wires along so that they're all bunched up, so it gives you more space to wind through. You can find these ferret beads, again, in compact fluorescent bulbs, you can find them in transformers, you can find them, uh, you can unwind regular inductors for them, etc. But I'm just going to wind this and bring you back when it's wound. So I've just finished winding them. And now this is the end that the two wires are together. I'm just going to trim that a little bit shorter, but basically spread them apart like so. And there we go. Let me zoom you in to take a closer look. So here is the transformer all wound up and I did cut the ends that were together. Next step is to take the enamel coating off this magnet wire. Now there's many ways to do it. Um, but my favorite way is to heat them up. Now I didn't have good success when I did a um, Tesla coil kit or a sorry a, I guess a yeah a Tesla coil kit whatever um, but these seem to melt just fine so you just put a good blob of solder on your iron and you just make sure that that wire kinda stays within that blob for extended periods of time. I'm only at uh, 350 degrees Celsius here. And you see how that became silver? Well, that means it is well tinned. So that means the coating has been melted off and the wires are tinned. So there we go, that's two. Now that that is done, um, the two middle ones here was my um, my piece of wire that I was that were connected together, and now I just need to meter and make sure that two pieces are not connected to each other, and I need to solder those two pieces together. So if I go like this. Is that OL or is that? So these two are connected and these two are not. So that means I can take these two wires and connect them together and that'll be the center tap of my transformer. Now I can see that my wires are not quite the right length for this so I can actually unwind one of my turns here just to get a bit more wire to work with. There we go. And I have to redo that test once more. So one of these should be connected to one of these and not to the other. So these two are separate. I can actually solder these two together. Could have also trimmed them to the correct length, but it's not actually necessary. So I'm just going to sort of move this one out of the way 
and then see if I can twist these two together to make up the center tap of my transformer. There's the center tap and I've got two pre-tinned wires on the other side. Now I have this bunch of pin headers. This is five of them. And I'm just using five because I like the spacing between them. So what I'm actually going to do is pull out the middle two. So this one and this one to give me three pins that'll fit in a breadboard. And those three pins have adequate spacing that I can easily solder this on. I can use something to stick that down or I can just go just sort of push on it. I'm just pre-tinning this pin header. There we go. Make it easier to solder on. And again, that's my middle pin. My inductor looks pretty ugly, or my transformer looks pretty ugly, but that's fine. It'll still work. Okay, and now I need to space this up a little bit. So I have this ruler and this ruler. And I'll take a little piece of blue tack and stick that to the edge of the ruler and then stick this guy in here. I should be able to solder that relatively easily. Let's see if I can do it without pliers. Just need to maneuver the wire in a little bit of a better spot. And because it's pre-tinned, I should just be able to touch that. And that should be soldered. Yes, it is. Okay, same thing over here. And same thing over here. And again, if you're a perfectionist or you like things looking neater, you can just trim your wires to the correct length. But uh, I'm here to show you that even if you're not good at these things, it should still work. This, uh, this circuit is fairly simple and fairly robust. So that's done. Let's get our breadboard set up. And so that's it. I've gathered all the components that we need. So we have the uh, transformer with the center tap in the middle there. So I'm just going to put that over here. And I'm just going to bend this over so you can really tell that that's the center tap right there. Then I have my transistor. Again, this is a 2N3904 NPN transistor. And the flat is here. And I just, I think for the layout, it works better if I flip it around like so. Just trying to get that in. So we've got um, the collector on this side and the emitter on this side. And then we need a base resistor. So the base over here, connect that up to one of the legs of the transformer. I don't think it matters which leg, one or the other. There we go. Now we've got our battery here, which we'll check the voltage on. And we have our LED, so our LED uh, positive is this leg, so that positive is going on the leg that our uh, transistor is connected to, sort of like that. And I think I have it angled properly at the camera so that it should turn on as soon as I plug this in. And then, um, pursuant to our diagram, I should be able to just plug this battery in right here, so positive to the center tap, this middle here, um, and negative down to the most negative point, which is the emitter and the uh, LED. And this should turn on. Don't forget that a LED, a white one, requires about, I don't know, 2 point, let's say 2.5 volts or so to turn on. And 
This battery, Walmart brand, 1.15, oh, 1.27. So for a regular use battery, it's almost dead. It would still probably power whatever it's in, but uh, not for much longer. But you'll see with the Jewel Thief, there we go. On it goes. And so that means that this transformer, even though it's the Ugly Duckling, it's transforming up the voltage from 1.2-ish volts up to the 2.8-ish volts that um, this LED has as a requirement to be lit. But it doesn't end there. So don't forget, I was telling you this circuit is amazing. Um, the difference between this and this is that this here has one of these LEDs at each of these little dots. And so, uh, in fact, four of them are in series and the, se the series of four are in parallel with other series of four, meaning this light requires roughly um, almost 12 volts for it to start turning on. And what I'm here to show you is that this little circuit, mind you, I don't know about this specific um, this specific uh, transformer, but should be able to bump voltage up as high as 12 volts and beyond. In fact, I think if you leave this open circuit, you might actually be able to um, generate in the hundreds of volts, depending on your components and the actual makeup of your transformer. But let's give this a shot. Let's see if it'll light our 12 volt LEDs. And indeed it does. Now it's far dimmer. It's much dimmer than the single 5 mil LED, but it is lighting each and every one of them, which means we are getting a voltage of above or about 12 volts. And it's just we don't have the energy potential from this poor little battery in this inefficient transformer that I hand wound in order to um, blast it with enough uh, actual power, which is uh, volts times um, amps, in order for it to light at its full potential. But still, it's incredible that we're getting 12 volts out of this. So yeah, that's just the neat little circuit. If you want the uh, diagram back, there are some better ones online. This is just my hand jotted one. And I hope that you yourself will try this neat little circuit and uh, let me know in the comments below how it went. Thanks for watching.